Spirit has been mighty. And we thank God for it. And Sister Cheyenne, you're right. There's a whole lot of stuff I don't know about tomorrow. And there's a whole lot of things I really don't understand. But I know who holds my tomorrow. And I know who holds my hand. Lest I have y'all on your feet too long, it's a beautiful day. I love First Sunday. I long to get, not trying to rush the year through, but I long to get to the first Sunday. The book of Isaiah, one of my favorite books because the book of Isaiah represents the entire Bible. And when you study the book of Isaiah, it gives you everything that you can grasp when it comes to God, when it comes to Jesus Christ and how he works in our life. Listen, Isaiah chapter 44, beginning at the 21st verse, verses 21 through 23 has a wonderful passage of scripture there that I would like to, to lift today. But the 22nd verse is where I like to stick a pen uh, just for a few moments. Isaiah chapter 44, beginning at the 21st verse, it says, Remember these, O Jacob and Israel, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee. Thou art my servant. O Israel, thou shalt not be forgotten of me. Verse 22 says, I blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgression, and as a cloud thy sin. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Sing, O ye heavens, for the Lord has done it. Shout, ye lower parts of the earth, break forth into singing, ye mountains, O forest, in every tree therein. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Thank you so much. I want to talk from the book of Isaiah, this miniature Bible that reveals to us the gospel of redemption. The rasp, the gospel. Of redemption. Isaiah, like the miniature Bible, contains 39 books in the Old and 27 in the New. It is combined in its total idea a message of hope. The message of hope that the Messiah is coming, the message of hope that the Messiah has come, the message of hope that he is Savior and a sovereign to bear a cross. Listen. And to wear a crown. And when we began to remember God, listen, God will remember us. Amen. 
And we must know that it is God who first remembered us before he requested us to remember him. God has blessed man. He's formed man. And in forming man, he blew into man the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And when man became a living soul, man's spirit is formed for eternal fellowship with God. Listen, it would do us real good if we would remember that we are designed to have fellowship with God. When we look at the 22nd verse, verse 22 is one of the richest utterances of the gospel. I was reading a book, was trying to find it, searched and searched and searched. For whatever reason, I couldn't put my finger on it. And I guess it's because there's books everywhere, scattered everywhere. But one of the books that I was reading, it, it was talking about Isaiah, one of the richest utterance of the gospel is because Isaiah reveals the gospel. And what is the gospel? The gospel is good news. Everybody likes to hear <laughs> good news. I had a phone call a couple of days ago uh, be honest with you, from my accountant, when I saw her name, I said, oh, Lord, here we go again. It's October, and the time has come. She said, Reverend Blaylock, she announced her name. I won't tell y'all who it is, because I'm not going to let y'all get in my business. <laughs> she said, I want you to know who this is. I said, yes, ma'am, it's always good to hear from you. I said, What's the news today? I know it's October. And she says, I have good news. And I tell you what, ain't nothing like good news. Especially on this side of Jordan when it comes to the IRS. <laughs> and when it comes to the other side, when it comes to eternal salvation. All right. Look, I'm talking, and ain't no shame in my game. It's because if you tell the truth, <laughs> you like to hear some good news in the midst of all the bad news that you have experienced. So the utterance, let me go on, is of the gospel, the good news. It is not so much as the good news concerning man's captivity that occupies God's concern. But the good news of what God has done to release man from God captivity concerning his sin. Write it down. The sacrifice of Christ precedes, listen, the return of the sinner to the heavenly father and forms, listen, a compelling inspiration for them to leave their far country 
of self-will and come back home to God. Are you living in the far country of self-will? Are you trying to make it on your own? Are you trying to do it all by yourself? Are you your own man and you your own woman, your own boy, your own girl? Are you trapped in the life of self-will? Or have you submitted your will unto his will? Listen to what he says. If you are in that desert, if you are trapped by those shackles, he says, return to me. For I have redeemed, not I will, but I have redeemed you. And I have redeemed you is not the announcement of the gospel as far as just the story. It is the announcement of the gospel in both Old and New Testament. When you read the Bible, when you step outside of Genesis, it writes about it when you're in Genesis, but when you step outside the Garden of Eden, the gospel starts to unroll, unfold itself. Because Jesus Christ in the Old Testament is concealed. In the New Testament revealed. It's because God starts to talk to us about his plans for us to have a closer relationship with him. And when you talk about him saying, return unto me, the jubilation of it is not so much over the sinner who repents, but it's over God who redeems. That's how we ought to shout. That's what makes this Sunday so important to me because this Sunday, and this is the Sunday that every individual during the whole course of the worship should be locked in and focused on the blood of Jesus. And I looked around and a great percentage of the congregation is in red. And whether you're in red or not, Look at those crosses in red. The idea of it is, it talks about the, it, 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 it symbolizes the blood of Jesus. Scarlet, the deepest red, the blood that was shed for me. And when you talk about rejoicing, as a child of God, a child of God ought to be in high spirit. You don't come worshiping God low. If you come low, you leave high. You ought to be in high spirit. And the only way that you can be in high spirit is to become spiritual. And the only way you can become spiritual rather than spirited is to be washed in the blood of Jesus. When you talk about libraries, libraries all over the world contains mountains of books about Jesus Christ who has come. Libraries filled with material and bookstores with materials and magazines and periodicals 
with materials about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the Messiah and the Savior of the world. I'm preaching. Jesus Christ, the founder of Christianity. Jesus Christ, the Lord and the head of the Christian church. Jesus Christ, the, com the complete revelation of God, of how we look at God because how we see God is how we see Jesus. When Jesus said it, that no man comes unto the Father except by me. Theologians, philosophers, poets have written about Christ one way or another. But they often forgetting that our concept of him cannot be overestimated is because we really can't describe it. Because that he is, determines what Christianity is. And Christianity stands or falls on our biblical concept of Jesus Christ. And if you know that your anchor holds, And grips the solid rock. You shall stand. Oh yeah. Don't let me confuse you. As a child of God. We fall down. But come here. We get up. And the idea of it is God, through Jesus Christ, through the power of his Holy Spirit, has allowed us to get up, dust ourselves off, and start all over again. In all that he is in himself, he is the cornerstone of the Christian faith. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And let me tell you this. The key of the Christian faith is the battle between faith and unbelief. We just demonstrated it. Not long ago, just a short time ago, soul has been saved. At an early stage, before the struggle gets to be too great, of faith and unbelief, it's our responsibility. Listen, listen, stop shouting. It's our responsibility to train our children. It's our responsibility not to forsake the resp our duty. It's our responsibility to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord. Our responsibility to throw our arms around our children and to nurture them at an early stage that the Bible says that when they grow old they'll find their way back home. And let me share with you today we have to be careful because sin is like a cloud. And let me just Share something with you that you don't want to hear, but I'm going to share it with you anyway. All right. All right. 
for whatever reason we somehow living under a cloud. Just look at it. And look, we being real quiet about it. And I don't care who know it. I don't care who tell it. That's about it. I'm already viewed. Sin is like a cloud. And it's creeping into Jackson. We ain't a go. Look, look, that's not grammatically correct. Let me scratch that from the record. We're not just reading about it. We living in it. And there's an old song that I used to hear in the house of my grandmother. There's a storm on the ocean. And is moving this old way. If your soul is not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Drift away. Look, there's a storm moving this old way. And it's sin that has formed like a cloud. Let me go. As a cloud has many shapes in shades so is our transgressions as clouds obscure the light of the sun and darken the landscape beneath so do our sin hide from us the light of Jehovah's face and cause us to sit in the shadow of darkness as we walk in the shadows of death. Sin yields us no glorious showers, but rather threatens us with the fiery flood of destruction. Lord have mercy I'm preaching. The poet said, all ye black clouds of sin, how can it be fair weather with our souls while ye remain? Sin will ride you down like a heavy load. Sin will break you down and put wrinkles in your face, a hump in your back. Sin will Wipe away your smile and turn it. Your smile will turn upside down, which ain't nothing but a frown. The idea of it is, but the poet says at the end of the writing, let our joyful eyes dwell upon the notable act of the divine mercy of God. And watch Jesus Christ as he blot out our transgression. Listen, he at once and forever effectually removes the mischief. Listen, not by blowing away the cloud, but he blots out. The existence of the cloud. Isn't that good news? The idea that he at once blots out the existence. And again the justified man. Sees no sinful stain in his life. I'm about to leave you. The great transgression. The great transaction of the cross. Listen. Yeah, I'm headed to the cross. The great transaction of the cross has eternally removed our transgressions from us. Yes, on Calvary. You can make ready, maestro. On Calvary, by which the sin of all was forever Put away. God looks down on the soul 
with favor. And we ought to look up to God with pleasure. Ain't nothing no worse than a dead, downbeat Christian. What is it going to take to make you happy? What is it going to take to give us joy? See a dollar bill, you feel a thrill. The man that saved your soul from a burning eternal damnation and we won't wave our hand. The grounds upon which God is favorable intentions to his people that they return to him that he might shower his favor upon everyone. Listen, this is what he says when you read all three verses, he says, you are my servant. Not trying to make you out of a slave, but you ought to become a slave for him. You are my servants. Why did he say that ye are my servants? It's because of what he has done for each of us. Can you become a servant to tell somebody how good God has been to you? He says that I, in, I formed you into a people. Look, as a child of God, you're somebody. Don't you never let anybody tell you that you're nobody? You're somebody because you're a child of God. And how did you become a child of God? It's because you've been redeemed. You've been redeemed and being redeemed. You ought to be able to rejoice. Listen, I'm going to leave you alone. I'm going to stop depressing you. If you've been forgiven of all your sins, no fear withholds us from the boldest access to the Father. You know why? It's because we have our elder brother. And he holds our hand. That's what he said. He holds our hand. And what makes us so bold is because, be better, I can walk boldly. Don't care what you think about me. I can walk boldly to the throne of grace. And when I get to the Father, he looks at his son. And when he looks at me, he sees me through the shedded blood. Of his son. I'm bold. Folks at Blaylock, you show bold. Yes, I is. I'm bold. They said, you still talking that stuff about uh, 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 you ain't the toughest thing in Jackson, but I still hold that I'm tough enough. <laughs> it's because of the fact I'm bold. And the reason I'm bold is because my elder brother has done so much for me. I'm his servant. We are his people because we've been redeemed. And the greatest possible nearness of communion with the Lord is through the power of his Holy Spirit. Oh, I wish I could holler right here. But I don't want to mess up this Sunday. But I tell you, I can. Because it's sure been good. When I hold this cup, think about what he's done. Show sure been good. Has he been good to you? Has he done anything for you? Watson was shouting in my ear. Before I got up, I said, you want to preach again this Sunday? 
he leaned over and said, I will. <laughs> because he's so been good. If the Lord has been good to you, you ought to show some sign that God has been good to you. Hey. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wilson, yes, sir. <laughs> if I was Michael Jordan and Jesus was a basketball, I'd do a slam dunk. I would fly like a bird up in the sky. Hey, hey. Y'all give me a, a moment of meditation if you don't mind me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Writer says I'm not ashamed. Not ashamed of the gospel. Because praise is what I do. Can you give me just a little lad in with you? If you don't mind, if you don't mind tickling the ivory. That's what I do. Don't sing it. Don't sing it. Meditate on it. It says, is praise is what I do. I ain't scared. That's what I'm talking about. Deacon, if you don't mind, if you'll come and extend your invitation, let them know you ain't scared. The door of the church. I'm extending the invitation. There might be one today. They want to give your life to Jesus Christ. You might be the one today that want to walk boldly to the throne of grace. Regardless of your sin condition, don't be ashamed. Step out on faith and leave doubt behind. You want to surrender your life to God and say, I want to rededicate myself. Because I praise you for what you've done for me on Calvary. Moments of meditation, come on with it. Listen. of the moment praising God praising God favor comes down praise go up thank you Lord 